Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. Happy holidays wherever you are in the world. And uh, we're back with some more Warp Forge and uh, I've been watching some other content creators and uh, it's definitely been giving me a little bit more motivation. I've had little trouble with my recording setup so it's definitely been harder to get videos out there. But I thought I would just dive in to um, building an Eldar deck with y'all because uh, I haven't really done a video like this where I'm like fully going over uh, card evaluation at least in a while um, and just I really want to focus on new players you know like we're well into early access we've got a lot of stuff coming up it sounds like in quarter one um, in you know whether that's January February March not really sure but uh, I definitely wanted to make a video that was a little bit more skewed toward okay I've been working on a campaign maybe this is my second campaign um, this is sort of a, you know, a new faction that I'm not as familiar with. How do I build it or how would I go about building it? Um, and I've just been playing ranked mostly with my, my Ultramarines deck, which definitely feels a lot less powered than it used to be. Uh, who knows if the balance patch will change that, but I think it's fine to just have different people that are a little bit more in the meta. Um, and as long as it's shifting, right? I think Orcs is very, very strong right now. Um, but Eldar, I think, are really fair, and we'll see if they get a bump here or there. Not really sure. Um, so uh, these are the two Eldar warlords that I could be using, and I tend to like Anvir a little bit better. Um, I think I've seen people who, you know, feel, uh, you know, not or not super high on Anvir, um, but I've liked more of the kind of like controlly versions of. Uh, Eldar the most and so that's really who I'm going to be building and thankfully I pulled him from a random pack uh, in the campaign so that worked out really well so uh, we're just going to build the deck together go through a little bit of the process um, and see if we can get a game or two just to see how that goes so we're going to start out with Anvir we're going to add him which obviously then uh, oops, gets us back to building our deck so I guess we'll just call this first draft which is what I did for my alpha decks as well. So what is, uh, for those of you who don't know what Anvir does, so 35 health, uh, same you know stats as most Warlords, um, and it's his ephemeral ability that you can use every turn is choose a card in your hand and return it to your deck, draw a card, gain one Spirit Stone. So the reason I liked this in the alpha was the fact that you can guarantee the Spirit Stone. With Majorel Galen, yes, you can get a new unit, it's kind of tempo focused, right? They have to spend resources to clear that unit and clear the Spirit Stone. Uh, whereas Path of the Seer kind of fixes your draws, right? Sort of skews you toward maybe being a little bit more late game focused so you can cycle through what you're doing um, and just establish a more consistent game plan throughout the game. And you guarantee that Spirit Stone every single turn. So you're pretty much spamming this ability to build up Spirit Stones to enable your most powerful cards. Now, I also haven't spent any wild cards, and I probably won't today in the video, um, just because I don't really want to use things until I've hit most of the campaign um, to not waste anything. Uh, but, you know, either way, I think we can build a pretty serviceable deck, and I'll, I'll kind of talk about why. So I, I've really liked Anvir because if you can guarantee Spirit Stones, then, you know, your opponent can't really disrupt that, right? And yes, you lose a bit of tempo, but for more late game power, and I think... Um, or not even necessarily late game, mid to late game, uh, I think Anvir could be a pretty powerful option. So uh, what are we doing in the early game? Well, Guardian Defender, I think, is a perfectly serviceable card. Um, yes, it can get cleared. It leaves behind a Waystone. Uh, if it doesn't get cleared, then it actually can hit a unit for four for one energy, which seems pretty decent to me. Um, let's take a look at some other staples. Don't mind my scrolling too much here. Um, Baron Guardian also I think is reasonable and the main, and for now I'll just put two in, main reason is because it's, uh, it's got Shuriken so it can hit for three on the offense, um, when you're melee. Uh, it's two energy, but it's three health, right? So it's got that break point where not every Warlord can clear it, um, it leaves behind a Waystone. Waystones are your kind of currency to buff everything else in the deck, and that, that can be really great. So I think Veteran Guardian, even though as a common, is like a pretty decent, um, card now the difference between ranger and veteran is pretty big right because waystone camouflage sniper you're like looking at all these stats and you're like oh that's great and it's got three so it can clear a three health card with sniper two health 
right? You have no way of protecting Ranger. So this card just does not really belong um, in the deck, personally. Because uh, it just it's going to die. Yes, you'll get your Waystone, but like, how likely are you to get Sniper? However, there's another card, cost one more, that has Sniper, but we'll talk about why that's better. Warlock, I think, is a perfectly serviceable card. Um, I, you know, I'll kind of come back to it. Maybe we'll want it. Uh, for one Spirit Stone, you get <coughs> plus one ranged attack. Sorry, I think I am getting sick, unfortunately. Um, and plus one health to all your troops. I would say the health is the, the big reason this is good, right? So in two energy, you can play it as a two, three, three, and buff the health of your other units. So this does scream more like aggro mid-range than control. Uh, but it leaves a waystone and it's like decently statted. So might be a card that we want to consider. Webway Gate again is just a way of kind of fixing your hand. And so although I know not all players play this, I think this lends itself more to control, right? Choose a troop from your deck and draw it. Spend a spirit stone and cost two less. So I think um, I do want to try playing Webway Gate. Um, and I probably will play two of it. Although I do have to make sure that we don't get absolutely run over in the early game. And Wind Rider is a great way to do that. Flying Flank Shuriken. Uh, just the combination of Shuriken and Flank obviously comes in. It gets the plus two bonus. So you can clear a two health uh, unit, obviously, for free. But you can also clear something with three health. Um, and for two energy, you're getting a good bit up front. I think Wind Rider is just one of my favorite kind of early interaction cards for the Eldar. Banshee Mask, I think, is pretty decent. I think with our collection being rather small for the Eldar, I think I probably will want to run one of it. Cosmic Serpent, trigger the abilities of Recording Spirit Stones of all of your troops. This did get buffed from 4 energy to 3, so it can come out earlier. Um, but I'm not convinced, like, this is so, so important. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, leave, leave it in the comments uh, if you're an Eldar player. But I've generally not been terribly impressed uh, by that card. Now, Shroud Runner, I've typically liked, right? And this is a sniper unit, yes, with 2 health. But it's got flank, right? Big difference, right? This comes in, it kills, it snipes something. Also, I love the art. Um, and then, yeah, it's going to die. And no, it doesn't leave behind a waystone. But it's just a two for one, right? You play it, you kill a unit, then they have to spend two damage to kill it as well. And obviously, if you set this up behind Vanguard units, it gets even better. So um, I think Shroud Runner and Wind Rider are kind of like the backbone of your ability to not get run over in the early game. Swooping Hawk, although I don't think is the best 3-drop, I do think that it's fine. It did get nerfed. Um, I think it used to have Shuriken and, and maybe one of the stats changed. Um, but 3 energy, you get 3 health, which is not a ton. But you get Waystone Flying. Um, and maybe it had Sniper. I can't remember if that. So Swooping Hawk, I think, is reasonable. Um, Wild Toast, I've just generally liked this effect, as you know, like from my Calgar video when I talked about it. right? Creating two random Samheim vehicles in your hand, they cost one less. Um, this is like officially now better than Armored Support because now they both re reduce by one, but you get two cards out of Wild Host. And Eldar don't have a ton of card advantage, so Wild Host tends to be pretty powerful. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of great three drops. What's different about them as compared to Ultramarines is Ultramarines really don't have many great three drops. There's Stern Guard, and there's the Primaris guy that's, that deals three that got nerfed. That's like kind of it. So um, there, there's actually probably a, a little bit of room to maybe make some changes here. Wraithblade, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about. I think uh, Armor 2 is definitely huge for 3 energy when you can land it with the Vanguard. Um, but I, I've just been kind of underwhelmed by Wraithblade. So I might just hold off on that. I do think we've got plenty of early game, although Wraith. Vanguard scales well in the late game, too, because if it eats a big attack, um, it's kind of done its job. Elder Storm, I've talked about this card before. It's kind of a... Uh, you can't cut it from your deck. You need it, right? You need to be able to deal with Scarabs. You need to be able to deal with Orcs swarming you. Um, Elder Storm is just a... And, and it's generally pretty good, right? One to three damage uh, at four, but you're almost always going to repeat it, right, with Spirit Stone because you can guarantee it with Anvir. So if it's in your hand and you're looking to set it up, there's no way they can stop you from setting this up. So uh, I think you're just going to run two copies and be pretty happy with that. Speaking of which, I've fangirled about Howling Banshee before. This card is just 
uh, really excellent four drop and uh, really helps you um, get a little bit more ahead in the game. And I've gotten lucky recently <laughs> with some of my pull, pulls and I got uh, Nadu recently, which uh, is still still pretty strong, I think, right? It's got five attack, flying flank, strike, given vulnerable to your other troops. If anything, it's, it's a two for one uh, and it just does its job. So I'm going to run that. As you can see, we also have like a wealth of four drops. It seems kind of true for both Ultramarines and uh, and Eldar. Um, Witchblade Warlock, I think, is just one of those cards where like you kind of have to answer it. So I, I really like playing cards like that. Uh, Viper's not bad. Um, Wraith Guard also is like okay, but I think more than anything, you know, in a deck that's going to scale later, um, we might want something like Infinity Circuit. However. What we're missing is the legendary card that makes, van, uh, you know, as many Vanguard Wraithblade units as you have Spirit Stones, and I don't think we have that card, so we might shy away and just play some of the stronger ones. Um, so I think I think we're good on fours. I don't think we really need to worry about that, and we can kind of move on to fives. Spirit Seer I think is just totally serviceable, um, right? It's a five, 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 five. And you get a wraith blade. This this doesn't trigger, unfortunately, because it doesn't see it as the as the way the card is played. But it's just a big guy that you got to deal with. It leaves behind a waystone, and then it also gives you a, a wraith guard, which is pretty annoying. I also open striking scorpion X arch, so got to play that. This thing can just hit like a truck, right? It can hit for eight on their warlord, and it has stealth and its waystone. Or you just clear four health enemy unit easily, right? Because you've got the shirk and four. Pretty strong card. Now, in terms of the Wraith Blades, I'm much more impressed with Vengeful Wraith Blade, right? And another key word here is because it's got flank. So it's going to come in, get the armor two, right? You can set that up, and then just hit something in the face for six. Um, so the drawback of having no ranged capability is not as large as the other one because you're getting the upfront value to trade, you know, and kill a unit. So I think uh, Vengeful Wraith Blade is kind of a no brainer. Um, we do have the Warlock Skyrunners. I think these are pretty strong as well, just in terms of their stats. Five three five, not terrible. And then you've got, uh, and you've got flying, and then you've got the bonus of whenever you collect a Spirit Stone, uh, you get a little bit of value out of that. So I think that's totally fine um, to be running. We're actually getting to the bottom here, and we do have Reclaim the Stars, which I think is a pretty nuts way for the control decks to close out the game. Um, this is a card I actually initially read and was like not impressed with, but when you can, you basically win the game if you can get the five spirit stones off of this. So I'm not sure we want to run two. I think one makes sense. Uh, the only, but the, the thing is we can run two because we can smooth our hand. Um, I do like Crimson Hunter. I think actually I've, I've come down on uh, fire prism. I'm not sure if they changed the stats or something, but it doesn't actually seem strong as it once was um and i think this is roughly i might want to find a space for infinity circuit though since we're running double reclaim so honestly i'm just going to cut guardian defender i don't think i have to worry too much about the one drops and our late game is just going to be like you know potentially dumping our hand with reclaim the stars for all these like busted um units and i think eldar are pretty tough because uh some of their you know they just have a lot of legendaries that you can run that have like really crazy stats. So what are we missing? Um, obviously we don't have Eliac. So like striking Scorpion is pretty, pretty great card. Um, just very efficient for what you're getting and, and same with warp spider. So if, if I didn't have sweeping Hawk, I'd be playing these and, and cutting, um, or rather if I, if I had these, I would be cutting like sweeping Hawk and you know, something else potentially dance of death is I think better with El what Eliac is sort of bringing and doing. Um, and then some of the more important cards, although uh, Kelinaris can be pretty strong, just like very, very good stats all around. And Winged Autark I've kind of come down on. I think the two biggest cards that I'm really hurting and missing is Host of the Dead, which is one of the best ways to go late with um, Eldar because uh, you just get a million of these Vanguard units, and it's there's I mean they have four health. They're incredibly hard to clear, and then Hemlock Wraith Fighter is just so so strong. Three Spirit Stones is not a hard ask. Blast five, so you can potentially kill a unit with eight health, 
and deal five to their warlord, right? Depending on the positioning. So um, we're definitely missing some pretty important stuff, but I think we've got a perfectly um, serviceable deck. And uh, yeah, and I just kind of wanted to show a little bit of my process. So why don't we just hop in a game, see how it goes. And yes, select deck. And let's give it a whirl. Okay. Oh, all right. We're playing against Gaz. Uh, I mean, this looks good to me. Some early ways to interact. Uh, let's see how this goes. I mean, th this is against, I think, probably one of the best. If not the best deck in the meta right now. Or this best warlord. It's his buff. Get some early units we can drop. Oh, so they did a. We both get three energy. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh. Yeah, I'm sure I'll clear one, and I think I'll just play the Veteran Guardian. And I might just fire off the webway entrance. Basically the turn that I have some decisions to make. Next turn I think I'll just do Wind Rider plus our ability. But it also maybe we'll just run out the Howling Banshee. Oh, okay. That's not what I would have expected them to do so early. Huh, okay. Well, I mean, this just feels like a great time to clear, but we actually don't need to use Howling Banshee here. So let's just ship back. Sure, I'll ship back the Wild Host. I think Eldritch Storm is obviously going to come in handy. Player Wind Rider. Like pretty much whenever you can, you like unless it's really wrong to do it, you'd want to use your ability here to accumulate your Spirit Stones. Got plenty of options moving forward, so as long as we keep our health pool relatively high. Alright, kill a can. So we could run out the Vengeful Wraith Blade. But I think I can just clear with Banshee and this. So I think I might as well. I actually drew another Wraith Blade too. Yeah, I think I like this better. Seems seems more efficient. Clear that for free. Close up. Collector stone. And I guess we could webway entrance now, but I think I'd rather do that after I see what they do on their turn. If I was gonna do it, I should have done it. Like before I took my turn essentially. Okay. Now that's something I'm down to. Vengeful Wraith Blade. So I'll clear this first. Okay. But let's let's do our web by entrance C. Okay, at this point probably the Wraith Blade. It's gonna be more useful. Let's clear this. Does three two to me. Does three damage there. Huh, so we could clear with Eldritch Storm. I don't, I don't think I want to take the chance here. We could just run in out, use two of the stones. Clear that. Still pretty healthy. We've got another one as well, which we can set up next turn because we can use our ephemeral card. Oh, are they just going to trade here? Oh, no, they can do four. Forgot. Oh, okay. They should have definitely attacked with the range. But, like me, I think they thought the same thing and then probably should have thought again. It's just when, when you get used to certain cards with play patterns, it, it can actually really throw you off. Um, Alright, I think we'll just run out the... Uh, I don't love shipping this. Oh, we have double Elder Storm. So yeah, I'll just put one back. No reason to do that. 
for the Skyrunner. Not going to attack, obviously, with behind on health. The next turn, I might just run out double Wraith Blade. Will of Gork for my one card, huh? Okay. Well, I guess I'm pretty happy about that. Because that's an exceedingly strange thing to do. Alright, let's Wild Toast. This is actually a good turn to do it. Because we're not losing a ton of tempo. And then, sure, let's... Actually, yeah, let's just do Guardian. Let's do Viper. And then, next turn, we've kind of got our pick of the litter here. But... Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure how... The rest of this late game will go, but okay, well that's something we definitely want to clear, Gork or not. And it shouldn't be that hard. But sure, it can actually interact pretty favorably with armor. So that's good. Alright, so let's start here. And then we're going to play... Our Skyrunner. Let's discount it. Let's see where this damage goes. Okay, it goes there. And then I think we just probably need to trade our Wraith Blade here. Clear this with Shuriken. Takes no damage. Damn, unfortunate. Okay, so they've just got, like, big stuff in their hand. I mean, if they had the 10, like, rock invasion card, I guess we just lose to that. So that's something I should think about. Okay, we, we do want to clear this. Okay, so that's pretty easy to clear. Let's do that. Let's... Oh, webway gate. Ooh. Okay. X-Arch is pretty nasty. We can play it this turn. Cost one less as well. So let's... Yeah, we actually get to have it all, huh? Yep, should back one of these. Maybe we've got a Vanguard unit next turn turn to maybe protect this. Okay. Feeling pretty good about this. Another Will of Gork. Alright, well, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty annoying. Okay, overtime hits. All right, well, that was... Oh! Okay, I should not have collected that. All right, well, let's, let's definitely Spirit Seer. And... Yeah, I'm down to... Banshee Mass to clear this. Some board presence. Set up two Vanguard units. Tough game. Spanner. Oh, that's annoying. Oh boy. Yeah. Pretty good. Alright, everything survived. That's nice. Oh. War boss. Alright, All right. well, Affinity Circuit came at a good time, I would say. I am just going to fire off Eldritch Storm here. Because I think, well, it's close. 
I could just... Well... It's a little bit better, I think, actually. Spirit Stone, and I guess I don't have to cash this in right now. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get something better. Okay, that's kind of what I was looking for. Reclaim. All right, let's see if we get to fire this off. I mean, we're pretty low on health, so this is a pretty scary position, but we also get to reclaim into Eldritch Storm, so that might be enough for us. Yeah, this squid buggy is really nice. Card's great. Oh, I have to hit this. Alright, well, I should cash in the damage while I can. Right, okay. Let's do... Eldritch first. Nice. Great, that took out both. Alright. Let's hit a big. Hit a big. Excellent. Okay. Oh. Not really how that works. I guess. Dumped our hand. Here's hoping that's enough. <laughs> it's <a> crazy game. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so they get potentially three of those. That's not great. Yeah. Oh boy. Got some really good answers here. Okay. Alright, well, I don't know why they didn't clear this. It's a little weird. Glad they didn't, though. Um. Oh, I do kind of want to hit this as well. Okay. It's like an Eldritch Storm. Like that's technically better. Yeah. Okay, great. Clear that. Hit this for five. Oh, we have no more cards in our deck. Oh my god. Do we lose?
Oh, we don't lose. Holy heck. <laughs> what a ridiculous game. Okay. Well, Jesus, this is going to be a long video now. All right. Sorry, folks. <laughs> My brain was firing on all cylinders. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sure we're not running an optimal build, but this is after completing most of the campaign. Um, and not using any wild cards. So I would say we did pretty well. Uh, yeah. That's what I got for you today, folks. What a crazy game. Um, yeah. I will uh, catch you next time.